When Hasbro imported Takara's Diaclone and Micro Change toys as the Transformers, all of the transforming cars were grouped together as the good guys, the Autobots. Because kids like cars, you know, kids like cars. Okay, the cars will be the good guys. The planes and everything else were grouped together as the bad guys, the Decepticons. Planes, they're not too sure about planes. How many plane trips do little kids take, especially in those days, right? Okay, they're not too sure about, good, those will be the bad guys. Guns, guns are not good. That'll be the head bad guy. However, Mastery of the Roads gained new competition from the reckless Decepticon combining team of cars, the Stunticons. Welcome, Stunticons. This is your world now. Tear it apart. <laughs> Consider supporting the channel on Patreon, becoming a channel member, or purchasing some merch on my Teespring store today. Although they were developed initially for the Diaclone toy line, the four special teams, also known as Scramble City Combiners, were instead released for the Transformers toy line early in 1986. In addition to the Rescue Squad, the Protectobots, the Autobots got a little extra flying power from the Aerialbots. Adding to the Constructicons, the Decepticons added to their military firepower with the Combaticons. However, to take command of the roads, the Decepticons also gained a team of cars led by a truck and were known as the Stunticons. Look, the Stunticons! Look, the aerial bots! Only the Stunticons! Only the aerial bots had this kind of teamwork. Stunticons! The first team member was the Nihilist Warrior, Dead End. Transforming into a Porsche 928, Dead End is difficult to motivate as he sees the worst in everything. While Dead End would rather spend his time shining himself, his negative attitude probably does a nerve-wracking number on his teammate, Breakdown. Transforming into a Lamborghini Countach, the paranoid scout, Breakdown, always feels like somebody's watching him, and he can emit vibrations that can cause mechanical failures in other vehicles. Living up to his name, the insane terrorist Ferrari 308 GTB Wild Rider loves to drive recklessly as he laughs at the accidents he causes. Those crashes would probably benefit the egotistical Tyrell P34 F1 race car Dragstrip, whose obnoxious obsession with winning a race and bragging about his victories make him intolerable to be around despite being a formidable foe against the Autobots. To keep the other Stunticons in line, they are led by the merciless Kenworth K100 Aerodyne sleeper truck with a long trailer, Motormaster. This powerful and cruel tyrant seeks to destroy Optimus Prime so he can claim to be king of the road. Like the other Scramble City combiner teams, the four Stunticon cars come with weapons to use in vehicle mode, and Motormaster's trailer can fold out into a mini base with a small roller car. The Stunticons can merge to become the terrifying Menasaur. This Decepticon powerhouse is impervious to most artillery. However, because the unruly Stunticons cannot stand Motormaster, their merger into Menasaur leaves him relegated to simplistic thoughts of crushing all in his path with his Cyclone Gun and Ionizer Sword. In the two-part Season 2 episode, The Key to Vector Sigma, the Decepticons failed at obtaining a superfuel as the Autobots assisted in guarding it. What are you gonna do? They practically roll the road? That's something I'm going to have to change! Megatron sends Rumble to steal a big rig truck and four cars. You mean Rumble takes it? <laughs> the Decepticons then rebuild the cars and test their metal. Incredible! Not even the Autobots can do that! Stunt driving? Stunt driving! Yes! Behold! The Stunticons! In order to give them life, Megatron takes them to Cybertron, planning on using Vector Sigma. However, in order to activate it, they attack Alpha Trion to steal his circuit key. Reaching Cybertron's core, Megatron activates Vector Sigma, which finally brings the Stunticons to life as they swear loyalty to Megatron. I am Megatron, your leader. Declare yourselves to me. I am Master. I swear loyalty to you. 
The Decepticons then returned to Earth, and Megatron sent the Stunticons out to steal the superfuel that he had failed to retrieve before. One of the things that many have realized about the Stunticons animation models is that they differ drastically from the toys. This was because black and white images of the prototypes of the toys were sent by a fax machine to artist Floro Derry. After deciphering the images that were sent, the Stunticons animation models became the defining look of the characters both in the comic and in the cartoon. However, the talented voice actors who portrayed the Stunticons in the cartoon fit their individual bios very well. I'm... I'm Breakdown. I'll obey too. Would we surrender our energon with doomed? If we don't, we're doomed too. Face it, we're doomed. Better move it to head or I'll get you back to the rendezvous point! Big deal! So beat me! I'm a world I wanna bust some more! Now, the disappointment will see who is to their own! To stop the havoc caused by the Stunticons, the Autobots build a team of planes known as the Aerialbots. During their battles, the Stunticons merge to become Menasaur, to face off against the Aerialbots' combined form of Superion. In his first appearance, Roger C. Carmel voiced the Decepticon Combiner, with Regis Cordic taking over the role afterward. Menasaur's strength and special abilities nearly bested Superion, at least until Omega Supreme came in to assist, forcing the Stunticons to retreat. With Megatron's new team of cars, the Stunticons were able to take out many of the Autobots who participated in the Europa 2000 in the episode Trans Europe Express. After they combined into Menasaur, he almost destroyed Blue Streak, Trax, and Bumblebee before Augie Kane sacrificed his car to temporarily disable the Decepticon Combiner. In the episode Cosmic Rust, the Stunticons kidnapped the Autobot scientist Perceptor in order to help cure Megatron of the deadly disease. Using a huge heat ray, Menasaur nearly destroyed the Statue of Liberty before the Autobots and Superion were able to stop him. One of their most notable appearances was in the episode Masquerade, in which the Stunticons were mistaken for the Autobots as they stole components for a weapon that Megatron was building. And at first I thought those driverless cars were Autobots. The Autobots then captured the Stunticons before they can return to base. They're gawking at us, how mortifying! The word breakdown is mortifying! Exactly. Even Optimus Prime played chicken with Motormaster. Oh, you did it! You did it, Optimus! You stuffed that loudmouth once and for all! I hope so, Spike. Because I'd hate to go through that again. To fool Megatron, Windcharger, Jazz, Sideswipe, Mirage, and Optimus Prime disguise themselves as the Stunticons. All right then, uh, Stunticons! Let's roll for it! However, Breakdown used his vibrations to destroy his prison cell as he freed the other Stunticons. Everybody out on bad <laughs> Merging into Menasaur, they flew off to warn their leader. Once the real Menasaur arrived, the Autobots were forced to use Windcharger's magnet beams and Mirage's Electro Disruptor to merge into a phony Menasaur. Proving how powerful he is, the real Menasaur easily bested the Autobots. No need for the disguises anymore. And he would have destroyed them if not for the other Autobots arriving in time to outnumber the Decepticons. The Stunticons proved to be one of the most powerful Decepticon combining teams when Starscream had created the Combaticons to usurp Megatron's command. In their combined form of Bruticus, he bested Devastator and had Megatron surrender to Starscream. Who is the new Decepticon leader? Enough! And you are! I can't hear you! You are! When the Stunticons finally arrived... So you think Starscream's gonna stop here? 
Good point. He never knows when to quit. They merge into Menasaur and one-punch Bruticus out. Like the other Scramble City combiners, the Stunticons were a late addition to the second season cast of Transformers, and as such were absent during Transformers the movie. However, the 20th anniversary comic revealed that a battle of the Combiners took place while the other Decepticons attacked Autobot City. They were also featured in the Japanese exclusive episode, Scramble City. During Season 3, the Stunticons were regularly seen among the Decepticon ranks under Galvatron's command. Weaklings, wimps! Letting two insignificant Autobots get the best of you! Motormaster was among the Decepticons that demanded that Cyclonus deal with Galvatron's madness. Either you do something about his craziness, Cyclonus, or we'll do something about both of you. Ignoring the events of the Rebirth, the Japanese exclusive series, The Headmasters, regularly featured the Stunticons battling against the Autobots under Galvatron's and later Scorponok's command. In the Marvel Comics, Megatron ordered Bombshell to plant a Cerebro shell on Optimus Prime. When it failed to take control of the Autobot leader, Megatron used it to give life to the Stunticons by harnessing the power of the Creation Matrix while Optimus Prime was using it to activate the Aerialbots. Megatron then dispatched the Stunticons to instill fear on the human population concerning Transformers. The aerial bots arrive to stop them, and the two teams combine as Menasaur's sheer brute force nearly proves more than a match for Superion. Thinking that all robots are evil, the superpowered human Circuit Breaker used all of her power to blast Superion while Menasaur knocked him out with his Cyclone Gun. Temporarily drained of all her power, Circuit Breaker is forced to flee from Menasaur's wrath. After returning to Decepticon headquarters, the Stunticons were largely forgotten about during the regular comics run. Even the UK stories rarely featured them with a few exceptions. While the Aerialbots and Combaticons were released in neon colors for Generation 2, plans to release the Protectobots and the Stunticons were ultimately cancelled. A small number of images of production samples of both teams have surfaced over the years. However, a limited run of G2 Breakdown was released as the very first BotCon exclusive in 1994. In the Dreamwave comics, the Stunticons were deemed too dangerous and were kept deactivated within the Epsilon detention banks. To create a diversion to his true plans, Shockwave sent Rumble and Frenzy to activate the Decepticon Kings of the Road. Once activated, they combined into Menasaur, who easily took out Defensor, the Omnibots, and even Roadbuster and Whirl. However, Ultra Magnus was able to utilize the fact that the other Stunticons despise Motormaster to further fracture Menasaur's mind. As Menasaur was briefly stunned, Ultra Magnus drove at high speed to ram Menasaur in the face, taking down the Decepticon Combiner. In the IDW comics, the Stunticons were abandoned on Earth after Megatron's defeat in New York City. Teaming up with a group of Decepticons led by Swindle, they tricked a group of Autobots led by Hot Rod to help them build a shuttle to leave the Earth. However, when Ultra Magnus came to confront Hot Rod about it, Swindle used stolen combiner technology on the Stunticons. They merged to form Menasaur, who quickly attacked the Autobots. However, Bumblebee soon realized that the Stunticons had a difficult time working together, which gave the Autobots the advantage, allowing Optimus Prime to take down the Decepticon Combiner. The Stunticons were then taken captive by the government agency known as Skywatch. When Megatron returned to Earth, he sent Soundwave to attack Skywatch, freeing the Stunticons and the other Decepticons. When they planned on returning to Cybertron via a space bridge, Starscream ordered the Stunticons to stay behind and destroy Bumblebee. While they easily pummeled the Autobot Scout, Bumblebee used his cane to overload the space bridge, which knocked out all five Stunticons. The Autobots then brought the Stunticons back to Cybertron, where they remained in captivity until the end of the war. After G1 ended, the Stunticons were often overlooked as a combiner team over the years, especially in the toy line. In fact, there have been several individual non-combining Stunticons, with some of them even renamed due to trademark reasons. Even Menasaur saw two toys that were redecos of others. In addition, some of the individual Stunticons' names were assigned to new characters in the franchise, 
such as the Predacon Dead End in Beast Wars Neo, and the Autobot Breakdown from the planet Velocitron in Transformers Cybertron. In that same series, there was even a rage-filled giant named Menasaur who joined Megatron when the Decepticons arrived on Gigantion. In the Align continuity, Breakdown accompanied Megatron during the invasion of Iacon in the War for Cybertron video game. He eventually came to Earth in Transformers Prime alongside his partner, Knockout. The details for them will have to be a discussion for another day. This is going to be juicy. Recently, Dead End also played an important role in the third season of Transformers Cyberverse. The name of the Stunticons was brought back in 2011 in the Power Core Combiners toy line. Here, a Decepticon named Overrun combines with four Stunticon drones. In that same year at BotCon, a set of Stunticons that were retools from previous Transformers animated toys was released. The tie-in comic was set after the events of the final episode of Transformers Animated. Megatron and his Decepticons were kept at Trypticon Prison in Kaon. Team Stunticon was a group of Decepticons who were reformatted to have similar body shells to other Autobots. They put on a stage stunt show as a front to trick the Autobots while the real mission was to free Megatron from his prison. Their plan was ultimately foiled, and they themselves were also locked in prison as well. The Stunticons returned to their G1 roots with the Combiner Wars toy line. However, replacing Wild Rider was a new Stunticon named Offroad, who transformed into a pickup truck. Since Motormaster was updated to be a truck cab without the trailer, the team also had a small Decepticon car named Blackjack. This character was previously a Micromaster in G1, but in Combiner Wars, he replaces Motormaster's roller car when the Stunticons merge to form Menasaur. In a throwback to the G1 episode, Masquerade, the Stunticons were retooled as Autobots led by Optimus Prime as they combined into Optimus Maximus. Back in the IDW comics, it was explained that Wild Rider quit the team after the Stunticons' defeat by Bumblebee. They were joined by Blackjack and Offroad, but they were once again easily defeated by Optimus Prime. Swindle got his hands on the Enigma of Combination to properly merge the Stunticons into an upgraded form of Menasaur. As he wreaked havoc across Caminus, Menasaur easily battled against Superion, Devastator, and Defensor before the Enigma of Combination was used on Optimus Prime along with Mirage, Ironhide, Sunstreaker, and Prowl to become Optimus Maximus. During the battle, Menasaur was defeated once more and the Stunticon surrendered. Trying to adapt elements of this story, Prime Wars Trilogy cartoon featured the Combiner Wars Menasaur battling against Computron. After killing his opponent, he began to lay waste on Caminus before being confronted by Maxima and Windblade. Voiced by Charlie Dashy Guzman, We combiners are here to stay and more are coming! Menasaur killed Maxima before being defeated by Windblade. The council has the enigma of combination. They're gonna build an army of combiners! His corpse was used as a limb for Starscream when the Decepticon Seeker absorbed the power of the Enigma of Combination. However, once Starscream was destroyed, Menasaur was revived. He then helped the other Combiners find Fortress Maximus before taking a beating from Megatron. In the end, Menasaur was cornered by Overlord and Rodimus Kron, who easily killed all of the Combiners. A team of combining Stunticons finally returned in the Align continuity in Robots in Disguise. Since Breakdown was a different character in Prime and Knockout somewhat resembled Dead End, the team had a slightly different lineup than previous incarnations. The simple-minded Heat Seeker loves to create chaos with his heat-seeking missiles. One guided missile to make your dreams come true. <laughs> the snobbish Slash Mark is quick to insult his foes as he tears up the road with his energy wheels. Well, I can see I have no need to worry about you, buffoons. The cowardly Wild Break can make up for his lack of confidence with his quake-inducing energy waves. His opportunistic buddy, Dragstrip... That don't look real good, Dragstrip. That don't look real good, Dragstrip. Uh, one of these days, Wild Break. One of these days! ...is quick to leave his opponents behind with his Nitro Boosters. In a similar fashion to power linking, 
these Stunticons could crash into each other, combining into Heat Mark and Drag Break, respectively. The team is still led by the ambitious Motormaster, whose obsession to be ruler of the road instills fear upon his team. I don't want anything on this planet faster than me. Rip out whatever's powering that thing. To me. In addition to crash combining, these Stunticons merged once again as Menasaur. Like some of his previous appearances, their difficulty getting along made Menasaur unstable. And he was ultimately defeated by Ultra B. In Japan, the Combiner Wars Stunticons were released in cartoon accurate color schemes. Ignoring Off-Road, Unite Warriors Menasaur featured a new Wild Rider figure, and Blackjack was not used in the set. This Wild Rider figure was released individually in the US as Breakneck, of course, for trademark reasons. Once again discarding Off-Road, a Generation 2 recolor of Menasaur was also released as a gift set, which also included Blackjack as well. In addition, Menasaur was a boss in the Famicom game Mystery of Convoy, and in the modern game, Transformers Devastation. Thanks to this reckless combining team, the Stunticons opened the door for the Decepticons to add more cars to their ranks. Never understood why any self-respecting Decepticon would choose automobile as his vehicle mode when he could have flight. I like the way I look in steel-belted radials. Whether it was the Battle Chargers, Run Amuck and Run About, the evil Decepticon cop car Barricade, or even the Viacon Troopers in Prime, the Stunticons will always be the original Decepticon Kings of the Road. Of course, the Autobots will have to quickly get out of their way. But what do you think? Who is your favorite Stunticon and who is King of the Road? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you like this video, be sure to thumbs up and subscribe. I'd like to thank my patrons and my channel members for your continued support. I have many more Transformers discussion videos like this coming soon, so stay tuned. And as always, until next time, till all are one. At last, all shall be one! Under Galvatron's rule! You dropped it, didn't you? You broke the Matrix, didn't you?